I have a question I wanted to ask you um, about, uh, well, I'll tell you that I recently, well, I've been on a plant-based diet for two years. It's been a process. I originally, when I started, I was eating processed foods and things like that. And I learned, you know, that I quickly had to get whole foods and uh, go from there. So um, about three weeks ago, uh, I ha- I've lost 65 pounds. Uh, I have probably 50 more to go. Um, three weeks ago, I had a very stressful situation happen at work and it caused my blood pressure to raise. Um, went to the doctor. Uh, they t- asked, told me to go see a cardiologist. I went to see the cardiologist last week. He did a whole blood work. Uh, my uh, my so most uh, most of my numbers were good. Um, my lipid protein A came back as one ninety six, and my C reactive protein came back as four point eight. My LDL is about ninety nine. My A one C is about five point four. Um, but he is. I told him that I was. I would like to do anything and everything else before statin. Of course, he suggested that I go on a statin. Once I told him that, he, he you know, broached the question saying, well, because your lipid protein is high and your C-reactive protein is high, he's suggesting that I go on a statin. And how did I feel about that? Well, I told him how I feel about that. I just wanted to know, in your opinion, is there anything else I could try before I need to go on the statin or to avoid the statin altogether? Generally speaking, when I see patients come in, and of course you say you had an LDL cholesterol of 93, if I, I'm going to make sure I heard you correctly there. Is that correct? Uh, uh, LDL is 99. 99, yeah. You know, I, again, there's a way to calculate this atherosclerotic cardiac disease. You can calculate that using blood pressure, cholesterol, et cetera. Um, I tend not to quickly prescribe statins, especially someone with LDL less than 100. Uh, the LP little A uh, that's increased, uh, the statins do not decrease lipoprotein little A. Uh, yours is, I think, 100 and something, I think you said. 96, 196. 196, yeah. And so, so that won't be affected by a statin drug. Uh, statins can decrease C-reactive protein in the, in the Jupiter trial. They show a 37% reduction, but that takes about two years, according to the Jupiter trial. And they had an increased uh, report of diabetes in that population. Now, your hemoglobin A1C is 5.4, so you're not quite at the pre-diabetes yet, but you know another you know, two, three-tenths of a point. Uh, what our studies showed, and this one I alluded to, that if you go on a raw plant-based diet, uh, you can uh, you see the reduction uh, of uh, not only cholesterol by over 20%, but you also see a reduction in um, you see a reduction in uh, the uh, lipoprotein little A by 16% in just four weeks. Uh, we were actually the first to show a reduction in lipoprotein little A in four weeks. Uh, in a raw plant-based diet. And, and so you can follow that. Uh, and then you can follow, if you went on our website, MontgomeryHeart.com, you'll see a section called um, the, um, and I think Jackie, one of my uh, people on this line, Jackie put the link to the uh, food uh, classification system. But uh, if you eat from levels zero to four, zero to four B on our classification system, over four weeks, we see people's like, cholesterol comes out and LP little A comes down. Um, uh, even a whole food plant-based diet that's not raw, uh, uh, Dr. Kim Williams and his group up in uh, Chicago, shortly after we show reduction of LP little A, they show reduction of LP little A over about five or six weeks uh, with just a, a plant-based diet by itself. So the inflammatory results, anti-inflammatory results of a plant-based diet by itself can reduce C-reactive protein and can reduce lipoprotein little A and reduce cholesterol. So, I mean, that's the data. And so uh, unless there's an acute reason to go on a statin, you know, again, I don't, I'm not looking at your chart, 
but you know, you at least have the doctor give you like six weeks on a plant-based diet. Uh, and, uh, and I think, you know, you'll see that there's some improvement that she did put in the MontgomeryHeart.com food classification system. So you'll see how we classify foods and, you know, the, the lower the number of the foods you eat, the more detox they are in that classification system. But, but that's something you can consider. Uh, you want to do a lifestyle change or nutritional lifestyle change, whether or not you're going to statin. So it's something that I recommend to any and all of my patients um, uh, in terms of getting their numbers right. Because these abnormal numbers are just small signals that something's in balance. And you don't necessarily get in balance by making the number normal. You get in balance by, you know, making your nutrition normal or optimize. Excellent. Thank you very much, doctor. And uh, we're going to move now to Janet D. Welcome, Janet. Hi, thank you for taking my question. Um, hi, doctor. I w- I've been on a, first I was vegan and then I was on a whole food plant-based diet. Um, I am. But um, I have a low iron all the time. And of course, when you go to the doctor, they then tell you that you should start eating meat, which is not something I want to do. Um, But it is something that some people in the community do struggle with. And just I do eat a lot of greens. Um, I do green smoothies. I have salads. I try to cook some greens as well. But um, yeah, something I'm struggling with and then causing circulation problems, um, even though there's no diabetes or anything, but uh, do have insulin sensitivity as well. So just wondering what your thoughts were on that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for that question. And you know, the, the, you know, iron levels and things like that are, are pretty important. One thing I would say is this, first of all, uh, look at the food you're consuming, uh, make sure you're getting quality greens and nutrients. Um, and this is something I overlooked for a long time, you know, uh, when I was, you know, uh, teaching patients with plant-based nutrition. Uh, but there can be a big difference between consuming foods that are, you know, um, sustainably grown, organically grown in your environment uh, compared to what's at the supermarket. So make sure your greens are not just strictly from, and, you know, again, nothing against the supermarket. Supermarkets are a great place. They allow to distribution of foods and the like. And they do a great job <clears throat> and many of us have grown up on it. But I think when you're trying to refine things and optimize things, then you may need to refine this. So that's one thing I would look at. The other thing I would say is consider consuming superfoods such as uh, microgreens or, or sprouts. And so add those to your salads. Those have an increased uh, amount of uh, phytonutrients and, and minerals compared to the mature greens. And then uh, foods like algaes, we use a blue green algae E3 Live. Uh, and then there are other super greens, spirulina, uh, it's good. So you may wanna use super greens and then the sea vegetables. Uh, dulse is one that we use in a, a, I like to cut the dulse leaves and put them in the salads. Uh, wakame is another uh, sea vegetable. So sea vegetables, microgreens, micronutrients, sprouts, uh, I think are excellent sources of, of uh, enhanced uh, uh, phytonutrients and minerals that you may not be getting from the mature plant, especially the mature plant is coming from conventional sources uh, that may not be from ideal soils and the like. So, so some people have to work a little extra hard to do that. Thanks very much, Dr. Montgomery. And up next, we have Christopher C. Welcome, Christopher. Thank you. Yes, uh, actors, it's Gwendolyn this time. Um, I have a question in regards to my husband been vegan for 25 years and had no health problems until he had his amalgam removed. His total cholesterol is 121, triglycerides 60, LDL is 62, lipoprotein is 32.3, omega 3 uh, to 6 is ratio is 8.1. He had a calcium score done that was zero. Mm-hmm. And all his D vitamins are within normal range and his vitamin D as well. However, he does have a low vitamin E, which is the gamma type, ty- <clears throat> excuse me, tycopherol, and he has a low iodine. And also since uh, then, he's had a PSA score of 6.2. No other health issues whatsoever. Do you have any advice? PSA of 6.2? That's correct. Okay, have you had it biopsied or what's what's the where what stage are you at? I mean, where are you? No, that we haven't had it biopsied as of yet. 
Okay. Typically what, uh, what urologists will do is they'll get like a, uh, a three Teslon MRI to look at the prostate and make sure there are no metastases or the like. But, but again, um, disease states or health issues will manifest in different ways. And what I mean by that, so let's say if I get a thousand people in a room and I fed them all say, you know, um, junk food, fast food restaurant X, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I do that for a year. Uh, they would all get sick in different ways. And, and, and some of those 1,000 people have perfect cholesterols after eating junk food all the time. Some will be have perfect BMIs, uh, but then a lot, maybe the majority will have high BMIs and bad cholesterol, and high blood pressure. But some will have you know elevated cholesterol, blood pressure, all their cardiovascular numbers will be fine, but they may have depression or you know, some other mood disorder. And then some may have you know, perfect cardiovascular numbers, but then they may have early signs of cancer, et cetera. The point I'm making is uh, that um, the um, way someone breaks down is different and the genetics determine how you break down, the lifestyle determine that you break down. So, so your husband, is, his cardiovascular numbers are good, the PSA is elevated, could it be due to an infection uh, in the prostate? That's possible. There'd be some other nonspecific uh, inflammation. That's possible. Uh, so there are a number of different uh, mechanisms. So what should one do? Uh, as I tell my patients, you always want to examine where you are. So what's your nutritional status? Uh, is it whole food, plant-based? Uh, if it's not, then you may want to make sure it's hundred percent plant-based. If it is plant-based, then you want to look at how you're preparing your foods. I tend to have people go to on a raw diet, cleanse and detox. We also have them do time restricted eating. Uh, look at your phytonutrients. You may ask a doctor to get a spectra cell test, look at phytonutrients, uh, make sure your vitamin D levels are adequate. Some people have vitamin D levels at a no, low normal range when it's different vitamin D levels you know, 80 or 90. So there are many different things that you can do because we live in a polluted society. And even though many of us are working hard to do the right things, there are often little things that we're missing. And so we see an abnormality like that. It's not, it's not a time to be alarmed. Just uh, step back and reassess where you are and find where the missing uh, things are, where the holes are. Tighten up the nutritional status. Look at the micronutrients and see what supplements you need to take Make sure your vitamin D levels up, things that enhance your immune system. Make sure you're sleeping well, the stress in your life. All these things are all important to kind of, you know, work on that area. And of course, follow up with the urologist and, and get the follow up. But there's no, there's usually the need to kind of jump and panic uh, because, you know, there are things that you can do to help, you know, this situation overall. Mm -hmm.